Thank you, Dr. Tu, for this kind introduction. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. It's my pleasure to present today, and I would like to express my gratitude to organizers of the conference, especially Dr. Scotton and Ericsson, for giving me this opportunity to be with you today. I will focus in the next 20 minutes on our dietary choices, how we can improve them, and how they can impact our uh, outcomes when it comes to cancer and other chronic diseases. This is from the American Cancer Society publication, how um, the cancer treatment has to expand to include promotion of overall long-term health. And that there should be collaboration, not just between the oncologists and primary care physicians, but also between professionals, experts in nutrition, exercise, behavioral change, and I added culinary medicine, which nutrition, culinary medicine go hand in hand. And regardless whether you try to avoid getting cancer, you want to prevent it, or you already uh, uh, have cancer and completed the treatment or are going through the treatment, all of those components are absolutely essential for our, uh, our health. So that's the, the key principle of lifestyle medicine. And it's shown here, and there is a, a link for you to explore. There is plenty of uh, very useful information for you to improve your lifestyle. Clearly, we'll be talking today focusing on, on nutrition, on eating more plant foods, but we should not forget about movement, who more uh, sit less, about quality of our sleep, and especially about being present and staying calm in these uh, tumultuous times and to, to love each other, something that we need, especially at this day and age. So very useful source of information is the American uh, Institute for Cancer Research. Every couple of years, they, they published those uh, uh, summaries of connection between diet and, and exercise and cancer. So very simply, the, the key recommendations are vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and cutting down sugary foods. We are not talking here about taking extra supplements and you know all kinds of herbal extracts and so on. We are just talking here about foods and that's what is the cornerstone of lifestyle medicine and prevention. A few words about fruits and vegetables. We as a society are failing uh, in that regard, our consumption for vast majority of us is under the recommended levels by CDC, two servings of fruits daily and three servings of vegetables. So there is a lot of room for improvement. And you can see that, in fact, we might need to consume even more than that, up to 800 grams of fruits and vegetables to reduce the risk of cancer and other uh, chronic diseases. And so um, the goal should be about 10 servings of vegetables and fruits. And you can see how you can achieve those, those quantities. Big component of fruits and vegetables and grains is dietary fiber, which is found only in plant foods. This study looked at 180 studies, prospective studies, and 60 randomized clinical trials, showing that the more dietary fiber you consume, the bigger benefits you have in reducing the risk of not only colorectal breast cancer, but cardiovascular disease and, and diabetes. And the key in that was also consumption of whole grains. And this is a slide that shows that we should consume unrefined foods. I hope you will, you will remind why we do that. A few words about soy and legumes in general, but soy in particular. There was some concern that soy might be deleterious for, for patients who have breast cancer, especially estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. However, new studies, uh, there were four studies in total. This was the first one show that, in fact, there is decreased risk of that with increased uh, soy uh, food consumption. Very practical tip, avoid the foods derived from soy that are refined and stick with those that are unrefined. Tempeh, miso, tofu, and amame, especially tempeh and miso, which are fermented. And Dr. Chowdhury, in her presentation, has shown how important care for gut microbiome is for our health. Two randomized clinical trials have been done for uh, breast cancer survivors. If, uh, the first one randomized 3,500 postmenopausal women, and the group that was randomized into low-fat dietary group had much better outcomes. They had improved uh, relapse-free survival compared to the, to the other group that follows standard diet. 
The other study went over uh, two decades, but over eight and a half year period, uh, almost 2,000 patients developed breast cancer and those who were randomized into low fat, high vegetables, high fruit, whole grain arm had increased overall survival. They had better outcomes. And so we have two randomized studies that show the benefits of eating more plant foods and less animal and less fat, especially animal fats. So how we implement those changes? This is from Mark Twain. Yeah, often we hear that people say, yes, I know this is good for me, but I don't like it. I don't want to do it. So how do we do this? Clearly, there are many factors that determine our food choices. Could be our belief, our you know, price, convenience, taste. It depends who is eating, age, physical activity. And, and also what is important is where this is happening. The society, the culture, and the economy. Can we afford the foods that we know are good for, for us? So this is what we teach our patients, very simple message, eat more plant foods and make sure those plant foods are whole, unrefined, minimally processed. Yeah? So we suggest to prepare one healthy plant-based meal, maybe in every two weeks. And after a while, you have the spectrum of those meals. I want to mention a few words about a really spectacular study, very well controlled by Dr. Kevin Hall and his group at the National Institutes of Health where they um, compared identical diets in calories, in fats, in carbohydrates, in sodium and sugar and fiber. The only difference was that one group was consuming ultra processed diets, those that, those that come in packaged processed foods, and the other one ate freshly prepared meal that was designed by dietitians and chefs. And what they found is that Within two weeks, there was a big difference in the weight loss. Um, the group in the ultra processed foods gained about two pounds and the one that ate unprocessed foods lost about two pounds yeah, within two weeks. And then they were switched and the same thing happened. What is interesting that they observed that the speed of eating was much higher, significantly higher in those who ate processed foods. And that could explain the connection with obesity. So to remind you, don't eat like these guys. These are the champions swallowing 69 hot dogs in 12 minutes. Don't eat like these gentlemen. This is healthy food, uh, green leafy vegetables, collard greens, two and a half pounds, 17 and a half seconds, not healthy stuff. And also don't eat like Pope. Eat spinach, but not like Pope. How to make those healthy transitions? Uh, experiment with foods. Uh, you have to try. Nobody's born chef. You have to experiment and try until you figure out the best way to prepare foods. Go slowly. Evolution usually works much better on a long term rather than revolution. Sometimes you have to make the revolutions. And then critically evaluate presented information. In our modern age of misinformation and variety of sources of information, this is increasingly more difficult, but there are certain things you can do. Um, critically important, we need to focus on the foods so that when we prepare them, they taste well. And Greg Rescher from Culinary Institute of America said, we need to elevate the unapologetic deliciousness of food. How can we do this? Um, there is a national organization called Teaching Kitchen Collaborative. Our Center for Integrative Health and Wellness is a member of that collaborative along with 30 other organizations. And the aim is to enhance culinary literacy so that uh, we as a society improve our health uh, lifestyles. We are fortunate to have in Cincinnati area Turner Farm, uh, which offers a particularly suitable way where physicians, healthcare professionals can interact with chefs. They have a state of the art teaching kitchen. And, and this is how the food as medicine is getting integrated into, into community. You can also find extra information on our um, center's uh, website. And here is also the phone number. Besides food is medicine, you can learn about movement, about stress management, a variety spectrum of, of integrative therapies from acupuncture, muscle therapy, um, tai chi, et cetera. 
Um, are there any side effects of eating plant-based diet? Yes, increased platulence, and some people think that we contribute to global warming. We know that animal-based ag agriculture is actually the main driver of, of greenhouse gases. Dr. Ernst Winder published this paper in Journal of National Cancer Institute, 1991, focusing on obstacles to dietary changes. Because we know which kind of foods we need to eat, we know how to, to achieve that, why we don't do it. And he was very famous for connecting the smoking to cancer, lung cancer, and, and he had a really difficult life. And later on, he moved to prevention of cancer through, through food choices. So one is immortality illusion. I will not dwell on this. Benign disinterest of health professionals in active opposition to health promotion. And those are the things that I'll just mention briefly. This is us looking at us health professionals, scientists looking ourselves in mirror. Yeah, one thing is what we do for our patients. We know what is good and we recommend. We might not always do this for ourselves. So um, one of the key reasons is the lack of nutrition education through our, um, through our, our medical schools and, and uh, education of medical professionals in general. Even if we would be super educated. Everybody would be familiar with how foods can be used as medicine. We are still uh, having an obstacle of our environment. So that means that it's not just what medicine can do, but what we as a society can do. How can we improve that this environment stimulates health rather than the disease or obesity? And this is from Institute of Medicine, National Academy of Sciences, suggesting several strategies, key strategies. And, and you will notice that this is almost 10 years old and we still didn't implement many of those. So there is a lot of room for improvement for all of us, no matter where we work, which kind of work we do, um, what our role in society is. We can all contribute to that, to, to transform the, the nation. Uh, we need to stop uh, offering and feeding our children in schools Ultra processed foods. And this is from one of the schools in, in the Cleveland Metropolitan School area that we visited when we I tried to implement uh, some of the changes when I was at the Cleveland Clinic. And, and you can see that this, that this is not going to um, promote health. So, again, a role for all of us to improve that. Um, younger generations are more open to eating plant based. Primarily because of the environmental concerns, also uh, concern for animal welfare, less so for, for the health effects. And for us parents, grandparents, the key is to be knowledgeable to avoid that they eat plant-based diets that are unhealthy, and that's easy to do. Yeah. So um, and another important uh, reason why. All of us, whether we are cancer survivors, whether we have chronic disease, whether we are healthy, need to know about nutrition. National Institutes of Health has recently released a strategic plan, 10 year strategic plan for the nutrition research. And there are four strategic goals. I will just mention the last one. It says reduce the burden of disease in clinical settings. That's exactly what we are trying to do. Yeah. Uh, we established a um, uh, cancer wellness center where our survivorship team with uh, Dr. Erickson in lead and our integrative team with me uh, trying to bring the best practices to really cover all the aspects of self-care and add integrative therapies to help patients achieve their, their optimal health. And how can we improve the use of food as medicine? And, and there is a growing body of of evidence to show that this is the right way to do. Now for you, recommendations. Chew well, eat slowly, mindfully, predominantly plant-based diet and enjoy your meal. Michael Pollan said it much better, much more eloquently, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. So it's easy to remember. And another thing um, that I would like to emphasize is there is this enormous gap between what we know and what we do. And all of us can contribute to breach that, to narrow that gap. If there would be some 
extraterrestrial civilization stumbling upon our planet, they would be stunned that we implement so little of what we know. And I will leave you with this, um, Mr. Spock saying, eat right, live long and prosper. Um, I would um, wish you all the best. I hope you will stay, you and your loved ones will stay well and safe. And thank you very much for this opportunity.